All right, so the Eastern Conference Finals is among us. Is here around the corner. Skirt is already there. So we got the Indiana Pacers and the Boston Celtics. And I don't know. Uh, you know what? That's not even. That's not a good analysis. That's not even a good pick. I was like, I need to have more confidence in what I say. And I think the Boston Celtics will win. But do not overlook the Pacers. Um, I think that this one, I'm going to say six. I can see seven. I can see this looking almost like the Timberwolves Denver Nuggets game. And by that, I'm saying that I, I was like, Porzingis, I was like, it doesn't look like he's going to play at least maybe for like the beginning of the series. Uh, and I think that is a problem when we're looking at the matchups because I was like, the big men that, that the Pacers have, you're counting a lot on Horford and stuff like that to be on the perimeter. And also, like, you know, like, Miles Turner is a seven-foot dude that can shoot threes and shoot and be, and, you know, not post up, but be in the post. And, yeah, I was like, I mean, like, yes, Horford can be out there and things like that. But I, I was like, Przingis just gives you a better matchup to match up against him. But also, I think, too, is that the pace, which, you know, I guess I could talk about the pace in general. But at those spots with their big men, it's going to be more of a problem if they're constantly running up and down the floor where you just, where you need Al Horford to basically be the one that's manning your five at this age and stuff like that, that it's like, yeah, sure. It's like, I was like, but how long can you do that for games and stuff like that? Like, yeah, I was like, the rest, like really the rest of the, the team can run, yes, with the Pacers. I, but I do think, I, I wonder if, uh, it's, it's basically going to be the Pacers' death versus the Boston starting unit, which is basically sort of like them playing the Knicks, where it's just like you got your five men, you know, until everybody started breaking down, versus Indiana's like ten guys. Um, I think that Indiana, I was like, also got a good amount of wing players as well too to match up with them. You know, I was like, and none of them are none. Of them, I was like, and just like Boston, none of them are small. You know, White six five, Holiday like six three, six four. Uh, Brown six six, Tatum six nine, you know, I was like whoever six ten, whatever. Um, you know, whereas like Hallen Burns six five, Nimhart six five, uh what's our boy in a uh Naismith six nine, former Celtics, and you know, he he gonna want to show out. Pascal Siakam, six ten, Turner, seven foot, I was like topping six nine. Um I like TD McConnell, yes, he I was like, yes, he's short, but I was like, that's sort of but he's stocky and he just a pest, so I was like, that works in his back and this whole thing. Um Yeah, and they got I was like they got a couple other people I was like also on the squad. So that are around that same hunt. So they got enough wings and stuff like that. Uh I was like, what happens if you don't kind of like and the thing is the Celtics have dropped a couple games too. Like where they just like they play down to their competition, they just don't have it. They're not hitting their shots, and then they don't hit their shots. They don't do anything else to really rectify that. And guess what? The Pacers really take advantage of when you are having those off nights because the way they keep on shooting and their pace, it really doesn't matter if they're not hitting their shots right now because they're just going to get up so many that it doesn't matter. That at some point they're going to just start falling and hitting. Now, with that being said, where the um, the Celtics could falter on uh, offense, the Pacers, we got to see them do consistent defense. Like, yes, they've done it in spurts, I was like, or in games or whatever like that. But if you could do this against the Celtics team, like, like it's like, it don't have to be great. It just has to be consistent. Um, you know, where you're able to stack some run, like, like you, you, you ran off a couple shots, 
Guess what? You also, in that same time span, stopped them a couple times. Guess what? Now, instead of just being up like eight points, now that might be 17 points because you done stopped them on like three while you shot a couple shots. So, and the Celtics is a team that I think are really front runners, where it's like if they're on you early, they will just keep being on you. And that's like, you might get into the game, but, or, and stick around, but. Their name, they're mostly able to always keep the lead or or just blowing you out. When they're sort of behind, we haven't really, I mean, they haven't really needed to either. But how is it when they're behind? Also, like I said, if their shot's not falling and you're behind, what are you, what else are you going to do with it? Because it's like they are a jump shooting team. Outside of Brown, Brown will go to the basket. And I was like, Tatum. Mm, I was like, I was like, I'm not saying he doesn't, but I was like, he doesn't go to the like Brown would go go to the hole and get fouled and try to like get his shot that way. Tatum most like it's like he goes to the basket, but it's really kind of like he about to get a dunk, like you know something fairly easy. Um, I think I'll, I think Howland Burton is going to be key, not just because he's their star player. Um, but I, th- I think it's be- uh, the way that he'll play when he, especially because he's going to be matched up against Drew Hill, sometimes Derek White. So you got to make them pay. You got to tire them out. You got to, like, since you, you're taking Drew Hill away, the, that's their best perimeter, one of their better the perimeter defenders. You know, like, you got to occupy. Cause that's who they're going to throw at him at first. I think at some point they probably will throw Brown on him if he gets hot. Um, just because he's a bigger dude um, or whatnot. But if Hallenburn could get some shots going, I think that really gets everybody else uh, playing. And uh, I was like, Pascal Siakam, just because he's going to be matched up against Tatum pretty much around that same spot. And this is like, if you can match Tatum, like not saying like not saying you got to go blow for blow with him, but if you can match up with Tatum, tire him out, whatever you want to, Harass him enough, cause I think I I, cause I I feel like Nate Smith is going to probably be on him, to be honest. Uh, like I was like, they don't have any, they don't have any. Nate Smith is probably their stopper, but they just, but they're, but it's like as I said, if they could play consistent defense, not a great defense, just consistent, they got enough where they could switch and it's just like do enough until uh, like until they take one of those hard ass shots that they take like they call they're really a hard shot maker now what you don't want as a pacer is your pace leading to boston getting easier shots you know where it's like they miss and it's like cool they're taking it back in transition even if they're in a half court setting now they got favorable matchups and stuff like that where it's like Oh, cool. Now Tatum's on Hallenburn. Hallenburn ain't stopping Tatum. Tatum stopping Tatum. Um I but I if you told me that Indiana beat the Celtics, I don't think I'd be surprised. Uh and it's like not just because it's the Celtics and it's Tatum and we're like I think they actually have an actual shot because of the way they play that I think their whole run and gun mentality will help them versus the Celtics that can play defense. Just because doing all that running and all that I like and all and like the open space and the passing will break down their defense and a lot more than cuz they're not they I like Yes, they're going to be in half court settings, but not as often. And I was like, their and their transition is like so much better than everybody else. And also, too, once you start having it, I was like, look, you can do Nick, but you're going to have to give them dude breaks. And it's like, them dudes on the bench, I was like, I don't, like, they can't. I was like, if, like, we've seen it that the Pacers bench has sometimes carried the team to win the, when the starters couldn't. Um, so I was like, that should favor Pacers. And if they could get that, then I was like, this is going to be a long series. Because if their, de- their, their bench unit can take over or be somewhat with the starting unit, then that's going to basically balance out what the Celtics starting, the only starting unit really going to be able to produce. But let's be honest, this is going to really just come down to the star. Is Brown and Tatum going to be 
Howland Burton and Pascal Siakam. That's really like, yes, I know it's that simple of the stars got to be great. And it's like, yeah, but if this, if Brown and Tatum isn't, the Celtics ain't winning. I think the Pacers don't need Howland Burton to be great. I don't think they need Siakam to be great. And I think they can still win. I can't say it for another team. And kind of like, now granted, yes, they got Derek White, but I mean, he's been struggling. But he, I was like, he he can score the ball, but it's not. It's, he is he's and he's a three point shooter. But it, I don't feel comfortable with him the same way that it's like yes, him in conjunction can like yes, if Brown is over here like going crazy or Tatum is. And White gave you something like yes, it helps. But if Brown and Tatum aren't going great, and I'm like, but I'm saying that if Hallen Burton isn't and Siakam isn't in the same game, I still feel like they can they can find somebody that gave they they can find the rest of their complementary players that will get together and give them enough. I was like, is Drew going to give you enough? What are you getting from Horford? He only done had like really one good game. Porzingis is out, so it's like, like if they had Porzingis, I'd be like, oh, it doesn't matter because they got at least four options now. But they really only they got like two and a possible. Like Derek White used used to be like you know it was like there was two. I was like they had two jokers, and he had an ace. Now like two jokers, and it's a queen. Not making like that type of joke, but the fact that it's like you throw that queen out. You might get a book. Maybe. Anyway, I like like I said, I'll go with the Celtics. But I was like, Pacers will get, I think, till to six. I'll I will say that. I will say that I think their play style can beat the Celtics over the long haul. And crash. And I was like the defense that they even play. Up and down, several games, all the time, all the time, and that just that was like like Marshawn Lynch is like that just wear through a mother. But anyway, we'll see how this all goes. I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We all are uh, able to change our mind and stuff like that. We seen how the Denver and the Timberwolves game that went. I mean, games went. I think it's gonna be like that, where it's like blowouts and like. Two close games, kind of thing, where like like two blowouts and probably four close games. I think that's how I think that's how it's gonna be. And playing against the Nugget, the Knicks, that were just like a tough, rugged team, and it's not really what the Celtics are. I'm like that might actually give them a lot more uh, ability to also take out the Celtics, especially because they've been tested, mother approved, while the Celtics haven't. But hey, we'll see how it all goes. So till then, after the game. See ya.